Yes. It's very nice to see all of you here. So many of you from Australia. To worship Shiva Sadashiva. I think this is a very important occasion. <coughs> it's important because the God Almighty, who is one, is expressed on your heart. We have to understand People came on this earth at different times in countries. Righteousness, that is dharma. How to elevate yourself? And all of them have said, be born. to become the Spirit. They have all such a small Same thing, because they knew without tension is filled with the <coughs> light of the Spirit, you will to understand spiritual. You have the spirit within you, which is all the time in a witness state. Why all the religions have failed? Because they did not get their Self-realization. They did not become the Spirit. So there's a tremendous difference between you on all, and all others who profess some religion. It looks as if they're hypocrites. They intellectualize it, as you know, they explain it very well, but you can see very clearly that they haven't absorbed spirituality. That absorption was impossible without Self-realization. This everybody felt. Buddha went to this limit and Mahavira both to say that, forget about God. Forget about God Almighty, you just get yourself, your self realization. So they are called as atheists, Adirikshavadi, they don't believe in Ishwara. But they felt that the way people are just talking about God Almighty and what the books have said. These books also speak of righteousness except in some books there has been some sort of interference. But most of them speak of spirituality and what you have to achieve. What is the purpose of religion? All that is spoken very well, written very well, They'll tell you, you have to be this, you have to be that. This is not good, that is not good. So even the first step where the dharma has to be established was not established. Where people are not supposed to cheat each other, there has to be justice, there has to be collectivity, 
there has to be love and understanding, no jealousies, no hypocrisy, where it's a different race, a different community, we can call it a different civilization is to be created. Everybody claims that they are the chosen ones, but they are just the same. There's a tremendous achievement of Sahaja Yogis that they have achieved this state of spirit. So now you can absorb dharma without any difficulties, without any difficulties. You would not like to cheat anyone, you would not like to kill anyone, you would not like to be violent with anyone. You will stick on to the truth. The truth, very few people can stick on to the truth. Then you are not people who are going to rob others. You have no intention at all. Don't come into your mind that you are tempted to take away things from others. First of all, which is the most important thing, that you have a rapport with God Almighty, that you are, in a way, in awe about God. There is awe, not, I would say, fear, because fear is all dispelled, there's no more fear for you. But you have awe for God, that is God Almighty. You won't cheat people, you won't cheat Sahaja Yoga for money, you won't fight for power, or for something that is material, all your attention will be towards the expansion of your awareness in the light of the Spirit. This is the vision of your mother, because Shiva is just a witness. Sadashiva is just witnessing all this play. He doesn't have any visions about it. But now he must have lots of hopes after seeing the kind of people that are created out of surgery. Very unique, very beautiful, wonderful angel-like people have been created. Now only problem is that you have to keep to your angelic foundations. But I find that sometimes it happens, doesn't matter, that you fall and falter. Again you rise into your awareness and try to locate the new dimensions that are available to you, that you can find out. All this is possible because now you belong really to the Chosen One's race. You must know also that you are very special people. It is not realized sometimes by Sahaja Yogis. They have no self-esteem as to what they have got. Once you have self-esteem, you will have the wisdom to understand what is your role in this lifetime. This self-esteem is only possible if you see other people who are lost in the mire of nonsense. Now you are a special community, I said. You are the one who are going to create that great community. Now whatever are the dharmas, points, or we can say dharma's aspects, 
you can imbibe them sahaj. Sahaj has a very special meaning, spontaneously. You do not have to exert. You do not have to go into a penance or work it out. In a sahaj way you can do it. Sahaj also means easy. You can have it in your heart, all these qualities, without any difficulty whatsoever. It's the easiest thing for you to be righteous than to be otherwise. It's easier for you to be honest than to be otherwise. So this <coughs> speciality that you have got is the vision of all the saints, of all the prophets, of all the seers, of all the incarnations, is you. There are lectures and lectures people give, you must do like this, you must do that. They think that by educating people into these principles people will be all right. They cannot. If you try to educate them, it will go as an ego into their heads, because you get educated only through your ego. It's not Sahaj, it's not Sahaj sustenance, Sahaj dharana. <coughs> it is something that is put onto you from outside. But for you it is very easy that you can imbibe all the aspects of dharma very easily. Don't have to do anything, you will not just do it. I have known people who used to take drugs, who used to abuse people, beat. Uh, this one fellow, he said, he used to carry a revolver always with him. He's become such a quiet, silent, beautiful person, that unbelievable, but his wife tells me that he was like this. So now you are that special people. And those people who have not got their realization cannot get to dharma easily. Then the second point, which is very easy for you, is to love another person to care for another person. It's very easy. You would love to do that. You would love to care for people who are Sajogis, also who are non-Sajogis. Sajoga is quite flexible. If you see somebody who is a non-Sajogi and also suffering, you would immediately jump to see that that person gets help from you. I have seen people in Sahaja Yoga, very interesting they are. One gentleman came to me and said, Mother, I have no money, I want to go and uh, do some work for Sahaja Yoga, but I have no money, even I have no money for the household. I said, all right, that's very good, you come tomorrow, I'll give you the money. Next day he never came. I said, what's the matter? He said, there was somebody sitting with you that time when I was talking to you, if you remember. I said, I don't remember so clearly. All right, I also don't know him. As soon as I went out, he said, how much money do you want? I told him at least this much. Immediately he took out the money and gave it to me. So who haven't got something in Sahaja Yoga who hasn't got money, immediately we run to help that person. Like you will be amazed that there are these six countries like Romania, Bulgaria, Russia, Poland, Czechoslovakia, All these countries, even Hungary, have been helped by 
one country or other. Even the East Asian countries are helped by Australians. I never told them, I never asked them. I never said that you have to help. They just came forward that, Mother, somehow we have to help them. We'll arrange, we'll get to them, we'll manage this, we'll do that. It's very surprising how they could just think of helping those countries. Then they made tickets for them, they brought them to India, they looked after. Russians came to India, they were looked after. Everybody was so full of compassion and love, but without feeling they have done anything, without feeling in any way that they have done any obligation to somebody. Nobody expected them to thank them and write letters of thanks or anything. Whatever is done is finished now, that's... Nobody ever asked how much money was given, how much was spent, how much we had to give, nothing of the kind. At that spur of the moment, everybody come forward, they gave the money and the thing worked out. It's very surprising. For example, France. France is looking after Romania. I didn't know they had done so much of work in Romania. I reached Hungary and suddenly I find 125 Romanians there. So my heart was really filled with such joy. I said, how are you here? French have arranged everything for us, Mother, really. There were no French people there, no one from France. And Romanians were singing so well that the Indians felt that, oh, wow, what is this, a new group has started. All of them, and they never used books without using the books they were singing, these Romanians. So I said, where are you going to stay in the night? We'll stay in a garden, Mother, it's all right. But I said, how? We'll stay there, doesn't matter. How secretly they helped, if I had not asked them, I would not have known how they have come. So this, to help the people who do not have, we can call them sort of a, we can say those who are poorer than us. I have seen also people, how individually they look after others and bring things, for their friends' presence and beautiful things, just for their own satisfaction, not to oblige anyone or to later on say, oh, I brought this sari for you, nothing, just to see that sari on another surgery. It's such a beautiful thing. Imagine these countries like England, France, Spain, Italy, Switzerland, very aggressive, very aggressive people. When they went out not to help anyone but to establish their empire or to destroy people or to convert them or do all kinds of things in the name of religion, in the name of God. But when you go to other countries, you just want to help, give them all the help that is needed. I'm myself amazed how it works out so spontaneous in your heart that you should do this and you should work it out. This transformation that has taken place within you has brought out all the beauty of your heart, of your compassion, of your love. And you give, want to give security to others, without expecting anything, without demanding anything. Then you all enjoy it, doing that. Living in a simple place like this, under a tent sitting, listening to me, you don't want any comfort. Just seek the comfort of your spirit and enjoy the whole place, the nature. Gradually I have seen also Sahaja Yogis are becoming extremely conscious of the ecological problem all over the world. They have started using 
things which are natural, which are artistic. It's something so surprising that suddenly they have taken to artistic things. I know of a gentleman who had arms, ammunition in his house, or everything like that. But now he has beautiful things. Of course, the arms and ammunition are on one side, but such beautiful artistic things he has collected. So I said, how did you get this? See, Mother, I was thinking that you would like to see them and you will feel happy. So I have bought for you to see. And if you want, you can take anything. I said, I don't want anything. You can keep it to yourself. So this generosity, we call it audari, is a sign of an incarnation. But this generosity is among my own children now. They are extremely generous and they enjoy giving things to others than to in keeping things to themselves. It has happened not only in Australia, it has happened all over the world. If you see the Sahaja Yogis, how they are sacrificing their time, their money and everything to spread Sahaja Yoga, to help others and to accommodate all kinds of things, all kinds of people within themselves. Such wisdom, such collective wisdom is there. We don't have to take any consensus. We don't have to say that you all must say this or what is your opinion, will you vote for it. Everyone votes for the same. If somebody says, all right, we have to give some help to, say, Bulgaria, in Italy. Immediately all the Italians brought out their ornaments, everything that, Mother, how much should we say? I said, it's your look out. And the Bulgarians are surprised also that what have we done for these Italians that they should come down all the way to help us out with money, every kind of thing. So this compassion, this love, this feeling of oneness, as if they are part and parcel of us, we are not separate. For Russia, you will be surprised that they sent a television from America. Now, America had nothing to do with Russia, but must be the spirit of Sri Krishna trying to help the spirit of right Agya, must be. Such enthusiasm about Russia is unbelievable. They came in the buses, they came in the trains, they went all the way to all these places, to far-fetched places, and they have achieved tremendous results. It's not only in Europe they are working it out, around their own cities, but all the way they are working in Turkey, they are working in Nepal, <coughs> and now somebody has gone to Japan. He is actually not a Japanese. He is from Rio. And he has gone to Japan, he is a physicist, but he is using some sort of a pantomime show on the streets to attract the people and telling them about Sahaja Yoga. He telephoned to me three, four times, Mother, you have been to Australia so many times, why don't you come to Japan this time? I said, all right, next time I will definitely come to Japan, I promised him. But this time I am already programmed, you see, by surgeries. So I can't help it. They have fixed me up everywhere. And I don't mind because it's so such. To me it comes such. Many people ask me whether you're traveling so much, they say, I, I, it, I never think about 
Also, the collectivity you have now is tremendous. It's not only in Australia you have the collectivity. But the other day I telephoned to someone in India and told them, I'm buying an ashram in Brisbane. They said, Mother, it's a very great thing. You're very happy. Now, for an Indian, what is there to be happy if we buy an ashram in Brisbane? So overjoyed about it. To them, Brisbane is the same as Bombay or Delhi. The heart has become so large because Shiva is shining there, the Spirit is shining. It has become such a large heart that it encompasses the whole universe, I think, the way people look, it, look at it. That's why you all have become universal people. You don't only read about Vishwa Nirmal Dharma, you don't only know about it through your mind. You don't only try to follow it, but you have imbibed it within yourself, which is so sahaj which you are not aware of it, how in a sahaj way it has come to you. Now, you know, Australia was full of racialism once upon a time. Nobody was come, allowed to come in there. Might be fifty years back or so. But today in Australia, what a change it is. Though they talked of Christianity and all those things, but they didn't think what Christ has said. They were just the opposite of what Christianity should be. Islam is the same. Islam talks of very great things. But it has to be confessed that the Muslims have nothing to do with Islam. It's absolutely from outside, if you see Christianity, you have a very, very funny idea about it. If you ask any Hindu gentleman about Christianity, they will say they are, are the worst possible people, very cunning, very aggressive, and they ta it takes them no time to kill each other. Imagine, disciples of Christ. But if you ask a Christian about a Muslim, he will tell you, oh, these Muslims are the most quarrelsome, dirtiest people ever born, fundamentalist. They are all fundamentalist, whether it's a Hindu, Christian, Muslim, anywhere. They are fundamentalist because they are reading one book. And that too, just reading, the book also doesn't go. One, if the book goes inside, they will realize that all these books are telling the same thing under different names, that's all. But that universal thing you have got, thanks to your spirit that was there, quite intact, and which has started shining. So, we have now a new community, a new civilization of people who are extremely honest to themselves, honest to each other, extremely righteous and good people. They are absolutely non-violent, absolutely law-abiding, very loving, affectionate, at the same time extremely constructive and at the same time very intelligent. They understand Sahaja Yoga. It's such a subtle subject. Sahaja Yoga is such a subtle subject because, you know, everybody has failed to make people understand anything about truth. It's an impossible situation. But this was the trick, your spirit. Once your spirit is enlightened, it goes into your head without any difficulties, absolutely such. You don't know how difficult is the subject of such.
it is such a fulfillment for the desire of the Divine that your Divinity is now expressing. When you are collective, you are more enjoying each other. You enjoy collective life. Individualism is against the spirit of the whole. But we have our own varieties. The way you live in other countries, in other atmospheres, with other traditions, that's how you are living. But among ourselves, we have the same faith, the faith which is enlightened, which is not blind faith, enlightened faith. Firstly, that you are realized souls. Secondly, that there is an all-pervading power. We have the same type of worship, whether it is Christ, whether it is Mohammed Sahib or whether it is Shiva. We all worship it the same way. We do not have a sort of a difference of opinion on that. Like one church becoming ten churches and one Hinduism becoming ten Hinduisms. It's not like that. We are all Sahaja Yogis and we have all got the same principle binding us in a Sahaja manner. We don't have to say, oh, we have to be principled. We have to be on this principle. We are Sahaja Yogis. You have to be there absolutely because you have to be there. You just can't help it. Because in your nature, now the Spirit is shining. Also, you are becoming archetypes, I should say, in the real sense of the word, for the people who are not in such. Such people are not available anywhere. When people will see you, they will think that what a model it is, what a model of life. They don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't boast of it, they don't hate anyone, they love anyone, they are so dynamic, they are so creative, they are so constructive, they are so self-contented. They are not at all competitive. They cause no problem to nature, they cause no problem to anything. They have become such beautiful people. Who are these people? Such beautiful people are the models. So now, individually you have to understand this part, that we have to be models in this country of Australia. Model of good behaviour, good language, decent life, decorous life, not fighting with husband, fighting with wife. You see, you open any television, just get a headache. I mean, there's, there's no other theme but a husband fighting wife and I wife fighting husband. There should be wisdom about it. Fighting among yourselves. You see, if so many people have gathered in a pub, what will happen? That pub will burst out. They can never sit silently. The mayor of Kabela told me, it surprises me, that in the church we are, then we start nudging each other, Baba, how long is it going to take now? It's better get out. You get tired. And what are these people doing for hours together with you? How are they so spellbound? 
They don't feel tired. I think they are special people. I said, they are. They are. But what do they do? They don't do anything. They are just enjoying. He couldn't understand that once we had a puja, guru puja for about six hours altogether. And they were surprised that how these people are sitting. And all the people they were, all the villagers, mostly they are elderly, they thought that these angels have come from somewhere. They are angelic people. They don't trouble you, they don't torture you, they look after you, they try to be kind to you. Not only that, but they try to bring joy to you. They were so surprised in that village. First they used to call me princess, then they started calling me goddess, then they said, you are Madonna. Whatever they could think of the best, they started saying all those things. They want now to come to Sahaja Yoga. But I said, let us see now, after some time, we'll work it out for them also. They are so nice now by seeing how the Sahaja Yogis are, because I seldom go out. But seeing the way Sahaja Yogis are, that the land behind the house was not even given to Prince Dorio, who was willing to pay a lot of money because he wanted to have a road that way. But to me, they rushed forward. And at a very nominal price they gave me that land. They said, it is for you only, please have it. The whole village is getting into transformation. But the dedication you have is very remarkable. Surprises me, really surprises me. I've never taught too much. But the way you are dedicated in everything, everyone who is not a surgery will be charmed the way you are dedicated. To Sahaja Yoga, to me. Sometimes I think, what have I done? I've done nothing. You had your Kundalini, you had your spirit, that's all. But such a difference, with little distance you covered, and such a difference. Can you imagine an Indian woman coming to Australia, finding this love, this affection and this dedication? Unbelievable! They all think that I must be mesmerizing. Nobody can believe that you could be that dedicated, take so much trouble, so much care. I mean, just imagine the flowers that you have brought. Just imagine all this you have done. I mean, just imagine the way they brought another big car so that your mother should be brought here without any difficulty. All this love, all this affection, this care. I never asked for anything. I could have walked down. If you had said, we have to walk, I would have walked. I would never have said no. I never expected all these things. But the way you want to express your love to me, this dedication is so much, and you sacrifice so much for that. Really you are sacrificing quite a lot. Your time, your effort to come all the way to this far-off place for this puja, all the gain that you have from puja is only possible when you are a realized soul. Otherwise, it is useless to do any puja, any worship. People go to church, sing few hymns and come back. They are just the same and afterwards go to the pub, because they think pub is the only place where they can get some joy. 
One has to exert, one has to sacrifice. Though I may say that Sahaja Yoga is the easiest thing, you don't have to go to Himalayas to stand on your heads and all that. But still, you have to sacrifice your time, your attention. Formerly you might be going to some uh, rock music, you might be going to some pubs also, you might be enjoying all these things, but you have given up everything. Without my telling, you just have given up and you are so pure now. Your attention is so pure, you can't enjoy all this. Don't you think it's very remarkable that this has happened? This community, I don't have to tell you, I don't have to educate. I must say that all these things you have given up, suddenly I find all of you have become so clean, so beautiful, your chakra is so clean. Is it? that these are your puropunyas that is working out. But still I would say you must know your self-esteem, that you are Sahajogis. And how can you behave like this if you are a Sahajogi? You can. Now you are a Sahajogi, so that dignity, that wisdom has to be there. The compassion, the love, the unity of purpose should be there. All over the world you have brothers and sisters. This brotherhood and sisterhood is everywhere. You have Rakhi sisters, you have very pure relationships. Anything impure is just thrown out in a Sahaj way. Those who do not fit into it just get out. We have now very beautiful families, very beautiful children. It's just think of it. Moses saved some Jews, but what are they good for? Nothing. What's the use of saving such people? Then Christ came and talked about this and this is what has happened to Christianity. Muhammad came and talked of very nice things, I must tell you. He never made it a rigid religion, never. It was very flexible and he said, you must get the knowledge. So according to them, knowledge was to read the book and to interpret it and to be an intellectual. After that came Guru Nanak also, you know that. What has happened to Sikhs, where they have gone? Sikh means the person who has learnt, learnt the divine laws. If I say you have to follow the divine laws, how? You are not connected. You don't know what are the divine laws are. Just follow, we, we want to follow divine laws. Now you are hanging somewhere on this earth. The divine laws are working there. How are you going to work out the divine laws if you are not connected? But you know immediately what are the divine laws. You are going against it as soon as you go against it, you know you can feel it on your central nervous system. You can feel it on your hands that you are doing something against the divine laws. Immediately you know. And if you are alert, you immediately try to change. You will think that's not correct. This is the truth about myself, you start judging yourself all the time and you want to put yourself right because you don't like it that way. So many ideas you have about your personal life uh, that, you see, there should be uh, a wife who should spoil me or a husband who should spoil me, my child should be like this and all finished now. What do you want? I want a real Sajogini. I want a real Sajogini to marry. And after that the marriage becomes a blessing. How? How these flowers have come out, that's how. 
It's all innately built within you, all this beauty. It just starts showing. But it has to sprout. It has to come up. This penance, so-called, is no penance to you. They say, we are enjoying this place. I mean, it's a place for penance only, the way things are here. There are not even closed bathrooms. People are finding it rather difficult to take a bath even. It's quite a penance to come to such a far-fetched place. Or to travel in Maharashtra is another big penance. But you enjoy it. I mean, you were missing. They said, we are missing our buses. I said, really? <laughs> I thought you would be happy. No, no, Mother, we are missing. I mean, it was an adventure for them. They liked the way they were jostled and they were <laughs> giving hiccups. They were very happy about it, that all this was... It was like an adventure. Everything which we call as tapasya or as the penance becomes an adventure for you. And the way they describe is very interesting. Like these musicians, they went to Russia and got lost. And when they came back and they were describing the whole thing with such description, as if God was just taking them from places to places, and how they were helped, every moment how they came to Italy sudden and how they came to Milan, to the ashram. The whole description is tremendous. Now think of what you have achieved, but you can't even think. You just achieve. Without thinking you achieve things. It's the blessing of your Spirit, blessing of Shiva. The Spirit is the witness, and you develop that witness state. To you, all this looks like a funny stage where people are doing this and that, politics, economics, you see as something absent. I went down to Russia, there were so many Russians. I told them that this is very bad shape, the politics is here now, and you are having very bad times with your food. No, Mother, we have no problem with food or anything, but for what do we care? We have got the spiritual food. Let these people fight, do whatever, we are not bothered. They were least bothered as there was a coup or anything, least bothered. Let them fight, let them do what they like. We are in a different situation. I said, which situation you are? We are in the kingdom of God, they told me. We are in the kingdom of God, why should we worry about these kingdoms and things? Let them fight. Such contented people, so very beautiful. You have so many brothers and sisters there. Early in the morning I got up, and they had, I don't know when, planted flowers on the road of uh, my house there. Flowers all along, rows after rows. I don't know when they came, when they did it, and disappeared. So sweet, I tell you, except for crying with joy, I didn't know what to say. If this happens all over, what a world we can have. There are, of course, some people who are exceptional, who are troublesome, who are not all right. It's all right. Forget about them. So now you are the people who have understood what is God. What is Sadashiva? Now you have faith in Him, which is not blind. You also know that His powers work, that His laws work. All other laws are useless, only His laws work. You have seen, experienced in your lifetime how miracles are taking place, 
how things are working out. A simple miracle, I would say, it was desired that Shiva Puja should be around some hills. But they couldn't arrange. They were trying for some other place which could not be arranged, so you are here. You desire and it works. As if your desire acts. But we have some people who are still mediocre, who are behaving in a mediocre manner, very dull. Some of them are very dull people. They cannot understand such. They don't understand how much they can gain out of it. So you shouldn't worry about that. Then you have to think about the whole collective which is good and one or two useless people, forget about it. If they come up well and good, if they don't come up, we are not going to force them. We'll be getting more and more people, more and more people. I'm sure it will happen. But the greatest thing you have got is the complete integration within your being, your heart, your mind, your liver, I should say, or attention, are all integrated. There's no quarrel, there's no struggle between your heart and your mind, heart and your brain. Whatever your brain thinks, your heart accepts. Whatever your heart wants, your brain accepts. Whatever your attention is there, is completely integrated with your heart and with your brain. You must see other people. They don't want to do something, but they have to do it because they are habituated. So many people told me, we want to give up this, we can't. Once you have got the Spirit, you get that power, that you can surpass all the temptations, not only temptations, also the differentiations that you always make, this is that, this is that. But you integrate, you integrate among yourselves, you integrate among different states, you integrate among different countries. The whole cosmos seems to be integrated, woven and governed by the divine laws. This integration gives you a complete understanding of Sahaja. Mentally, emotionally and spiritually. It's not by some sort of brainwashing or bombarding, but just through the light of Spirit you have seen the Truth and you have understood it. Also you have so many powers. You do not want to exert, that's a different point of view. But just try one word of prayer from you is very powerful than hundreds of prayers of these people. One asking is much more powerful than thousands of these askings. You have never tried that. Try that. You are extremely powerful. Whatever you desire works out. You have other powers of giving Realization. Also curing you have so many powers, but most of the time you'll bring somebody to Me to be cured. No, no, there's no need. You have given all powers, you have all the powers. Use them. Don't be afraid. Use these powers and you'll be amazed how these powers work out and how you become more and more embedded in your faith.
in yourself. Of course there are sadhugis who are made to sit on the throne, but still they are begging. What can you do about it? You are so very powerful in collective and also individual. Whatever you want, you can have it. I am desireless because the Divine the Divine power is working for me everything. I don't have to desire, it knows. I don't desire it. But you have to desire. You have to pray. You have to ask. And the wider you become, your prayers will be wider. For a wider world, wider vision, not limited to your children, not limited to your family, not limited to one place but unlimited areas will go. So we become very conscious and alert about whatever is happening in the world to put our attention there. We try to find out what's wrong with this and what's wrong with that. We are not just worried about a small little ashram, but we are worried about the whole world to find out what's wrong, what can we do, what can we desire. Because if we have the power and if we can operate the Divine power, then why not we work it out ourselves? We can. So your attention can go to any place. It can go to Nicaragua. It can go to Israel. It can go to Saddam Hussein, to any place that you want to work it out. It moves, it's mobile, it's universal. Just start expanding your heart, your mind and your attention. Your faith in Me, I must say, is great. I'm myself surprised at that. I'm quite a camouflage. It's not easy to understand me. I don't understand myself. <laughs> On one side, of course, I'm divine, no doubt. On the other side, I'm very human. Even in a film, if I see somebody suffering, start crying. Can't bear. I can't cure children because I can't see their sufferings. It's another aspect of mine. I made myself extremely human. And this divinity of mine also is just such. I've done nothing. I've been like this and I'm like this. I've not achieved anything. If I have achieved anything, is understanding of human beings. Because I always felt that all these incarnations and all these prophets never understood human beings. They never knew that they are not enlightened people. And no use talking to them of these great things. It's all a waste. It's like a blind person. You explain to him all the colors and the beauty of the stage. And so this human realization I should that I had is so beautiful. Now I understand what is the joy of bhakti, what is the joy of jnana, what is the joy of karma. Because a person who doesn't with this kriya. A person who has no bhakti and who has no jnana either. It's just vacant completely. I had to fill in myself with all these things. 
that I have to know the jnana. Not the jnana of the divine, because after all that is, that is not difficult, because if I am that, I know that. But the jnana of the human beings, the problems of the human beings, I had to study for years the human beings, to work it out. But once it has worked, that's what is said, that there is divinity in you, has started expressing itself. And such beautiful divine lights are sitting before me. I bless you all from my heart. Where resides the Shiva, the Sadashiva? And Sadashiva blesses you. He is an innocent personality, absolutely innocent. He is the one who is beyond any attachments. absolutely beyond any attachments. He is the one who is watching, watching all of you with such admiration. His joy knows no bounds. It's tremendous, as if He's dancing with you. It's a great day for us to celebrate this Shri Puja here, I hope all of you respect the principle of Shiva within you, that's the most important, and look after your vibrations, which pulsates in your being, because the Spirit has awakened in your attention, in your central nervous system. That's the most important thing you have to do, the rest of it is Sahaj. The rest of it is absolutely Sahaj. May God bless you.